Hey guys and welcome to this week's Photoshop edit walkthrough. Uh, this week I am going to tackle the image you can see in front of you. So this image was a bit of a practice. I wanted to try see, just try out some new techniques to be fair. And sometimes you do, sometimes you need to practice just to learn these to do the different tricks or techniques or just to try and better yourself. Uh, the one thing that I did take from this image was I learned how to do some pretty cool scars which look quite realistic. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll walk through and we can go through everything that I did. So let's just switch to the video and press play. So as you can see from this video, I took a stock image of a guy and I cut him out with a pencil. But let me just explain a little bit beforehand the process I went through. So what I did is I looked for stock images on the internet so I looked for free stock so I did a couple of these kind of images where I looked for free stock and then saw what I could create from the free stock what was provided so I got the this guy from Pixabay I believe and then I got lots of little separate images from DeviantArt and then I decided to create the cyberpunk guy so what I'm doing here is using pencil to cut out now I'm using the fine edge tool just to go over the uh, stray hairs along the edge of the head and because it's shot against white it is easier to actually do that. So now I'm actually using channels as well to even refine the dark hairs of the uh, man even more to select them out. So as you can see selected all those little hairs, all those little flyaways and we've selected them out and masked them out and now we've got it on a blank layer but well, we've got it cut out with a layer mask so it's all the white is hidden and all the hair and the guy is still there so I also did it for the side of his uh, little bit of stubble here so what I'm doing now is I'm going into the raw filter and playing around with the image in RAW, bringing back some of the detail in the guy. As before, the image was a little bit blown out, uh, a little bit high key. Sometimes with uh, stock photography, whoever's taking the stock may not be a good photographer, so the stock can be either overexposed or underexposed, but you can always bring it back a little bit with RAW. So what I'm doing now is, on a blank layer, I am cleaning up the skin of the guy. Just using the healing brush and going over little areas. So, as you can see now, you'll be able to see my uh, stock image process. I download free stock images, or uh, if it's client work, I will pay for them. I save them into specific folders so it's easy for me to find stock images when I need them. So, I'm using, at this moment in time using Pixabay and just looking for robot parts, anything that might work with a sci-fi image. So like cogs and gears, metallic things, machinery, old computers, anything can be changed into anything with the Photoshop as you all know. So again, going through all these various stock images. Now sometimes the longest process of creating a composite can actually be finding the correct stock. Uh, sometimes it can take hours longer than the actual editing process. This is really speed uh, sped up here, so as you can see it took quite a while. So now we've got a, that little folder what just popped up there with all the bits in. That was my uh, folder that I kept everything together with, so it's easy to find. So what I'm doing now is I found these pretty cool images of computer uh, of CG robots maybe transformer so what I decided to do was I was going to cut part of the leg out and create some kind of cybernetic uh, biomech pieces to the guy's face so I believe I did try a few various things but uh, and again looking for more stuck I think this time I was looking for some various pieces maybe wires or things like that to add to the guy's face I was just looking for, uh, there we go, looking for more kind of machinery and robot parts. Again, 
this was practice, so I was just playing around, seeing what worked, what didn't work. So I had the, the idea of some kind of hole in the neck where you could see part of the guy's neck, so he looked like he had been enhanced. This is the future, and you can pretty much do what you want in the future, so you can see through someone's neck. <laughs> So what I did there was I got that one piece and these little areas here were taken from a engine and I just duplicated that and stuck it onto this side. So as this, this part here turned out a little bit messy and I did eventually hide quite a lot of that later on with uh, visuals but you'd be able to see what I was trying to do. Again, using the pen tool, cutting out part of the neck here, and then using the layer mask so you can see under. This part did take a lot of uh, experimentation to get it somewhere. I don't think I was ever truly happy with how it looked. That's why I covered quite a lot of it up later with other storytelling elements, which is a good trick you can use for composite. So as th this part seems to come out a little bit more, I thought I would uh, have these engine parts kind of coming from the neck and then maybe look like it was entering the skin somewhere around here. I then duplicated this side over to this side and did the same. Just refining all these areas now with layer masks. And if you are using layer masks, you should definitely be using layer masks by now. I hope you're not working destructively, as I do know, I have noticed some people uh, do. And destructive is always the best way. So here I am now creating scars and skin effects. So what I did then was I got a texture and I brought it into this image here, and I just played around with blending modes, and I found that soft light soft light works, always seems to work best with texture when you're trying to blend it into skin so as you can see here this texture I then also use that texture to create the scars in the on the eye but as you can see it gives this real kind of uh, effect on the skin what looks like the skin's been either burnt or it's really scarred and very tortured skin Again, faffing around with the throat bit. Looks a little bit better. So that's this is the texture here. What I do is desaturate the texture. So you just get the lights and the darks, and then again, like I mentioned before, you put on soft light, it just get a really good effect on the skin. And then all you need is a layer mask to kind of ah, I said it first time now. Uh, then you need a layer mask to just blend the effect in and out. So as you can see as well, I did a little bit of dodge and burn around these areas here. Usually where, well, I'm saying usually, I've never seen this in real life, but I would guess somewhere where the metallic or the metal robot parts have been forged into the skin, the area would be like, would be darker and maybe bloodshot and red. So I used to dodge and burn just to create those effects around there. So here I am painting in the scar onto the face, obviously masking it off the eye. More textures onto the skin. So many cool ways to use textures. If you haven't tried using texture on the skin to create weird uh, effects, you could create very good zombie effects by doing the same. Then give it a try, it's always fun to play with. As you can see, I've also burnt around the eye here. Now let's just go back a little bit so we don't miss that. So what I was doing then was I wanted the guy to have grey silver hair. So as you can see, what I did was I got curves adjustment. I pulled the shadows up a little bit, then I pulled the midtones right up, and then I pulled the highlights across giving this very blown out desaturated black and white look 
And what I did then was invert the lay mask and then I just selectively painted in the effect to the hair and you get this cool silver haired look. I may actually do a little quick tutorial on that for you next week. So what I'm doing now is I wanted some wires coming out of the neck and around the face area. Again, just because it's science fiction, we can do what we want. So I use stock images of the wires. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of uh, I'll say that again. <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm blending in the metal, the robot parts to the face so there still would be maybe a tiny little bit of shadow so I'm putting shadow a look around the face now I am adding red to the eye so the way to do this is by painting in a blank layer on soft light in red or I do believe I think that is what I actually did, so let's have a quick look. That's how I normally do it, so I would suggest, so I would actually say that's what I'm doing. So, let me have a look. Yep, so I blank layer set to stuff like blend mode and then choose a red colour here in the palette and then you can just paint over those eyes and then use opacity to, to pull down the effect if you need to. So again, just trying to add more believability to these robot parts and now dodging and burning the face. Sometimes with these kind of sci-fi images or caricature images, the magic happens when you dodge and burn because you get a painterly feel. As you can see, it's starting to look a bit more like a video game character than a human being. And that's an effect that I like and a lot of people like. Dodging burning hair. through my stock library. So what I believe I was doing here was looking for a background to put a cyberpunk man in and I do have a, fire, a folder full of neon cities and cyberpunk style cities. So as you can see I took this background here, used a Gaussian blur to blur it completely out and placed it behind a guy. So what I'm doing now is playing with a few saturation on the background there because I didn't want all those colours. I just kind of, I wanted to, if there's lots of different colours, it, it's the eye goes crazy, so I wanted to simp simple it down, I don't know if that's the correct term, I wanted to make things simpler for the viewer by having just one colour, and then that colour would be the th overall theme I believe to our image, or overall colour to our image. As you can see now, using curves to colour blend the guy into the background. Well, I wanted to do a little bit more of a blue to the main guy because I don't know if anyone uh, looks at cyberpunk art but there's a lot of pinks and blues. So that's kind of how I wanted to go with that feel. or mist brush. Back into the stock library and add in some bokeh. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, you probably don't. Bokeh, bokeh, 
Boca, I don't know how to say it. Leave a, leave a suggestion in the comments and I'll actually say that. Because <laughs> I have not got an idea. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to add highlights, paint in the highlights to the hair. Using a brush on normal. So there's various ways to do this. So I was using just painted it in on normal and then refining it later. This was, I think, believe the first time I tried that effect. Now I'm adding some light glow into the image, blending the character into his surroundings and adding more bokeh. In this cyberpunk futuristic city then there's going to be lots of glowing lights and bokeh. <laughs> so uh, what I also did, what she probably didn't notice, is I have darkened him down a bit because obviously if he's backlit, the, he will have some light around his rim. <laughs> around his room. <laughs> and he'll be darker at this side because the light will be coming from behind. And now here is where I decided to add some kind of vector work in or futuristic glowing thingamajigs is the technical term. I've seen many Star Trek movies when Captain Kirk says press the thingamajig. Anyway, so I'm adding some thingamajigs in. Some HUD effects, HUD effects, as some people call them. I'll zoom in now, add in some detail with Color Effects Pro, put out some detail, and then just bring it in, in painted it in locally where I want the effect. Now add in the gradient map and some selective color to color grade the image. Tidying up various areas of the masking and the mask. As you can see, where I selected the wires from, it left some traces of the original image behind, so it's always good to clean up after yourself, as my mum always says. Clean up after yourself, Clinton. Anyway. So I believe we are getting to the end of the image now, just adding some overlays in. So these overlays are from RGG, or actually oh, now they're known as ProEDU. So go check out their website and you can buy various overlays and textures. And this is, after this sharpening with topaz detail, is the final image. So as you can see, we, went, we ended up here and we came from Let's see if I can find it before. I, actually, I'll post it before in the comments, but yeah. This is the final image. So, as you can see, we took a plain image of a portrait of a man from uh, Pixabay and just added various elements to him. Added some kind of character stylization, some storytelling elements, and you end up with a image like this so again this is a practice it wasn't for a client it wasn't for any sort of reason apart from learning various things I did learn in the process how to change the hair to grey how to do some cool scar effects on a person so it's always worth these little practice sessions just so you can better yourself so thanks a lot uh, thank you for all the comments and appreciation for to the previous videos like I said before, one of them's now got over 2.5 thousand minutes watched and I truly appreciate that. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe and I will speak to you next week. Peace!